Remember, you're supposed to remind me to record. Oh, record. Okay. All right, so we're going to talk about something called the product rule. And then hopefully maybe Monday we'll talk about the quotient rule. So I've got two functions, f of x and g of x, and f of x is x cubed. Samantha, this looks too small for me. Can I make it bigger? I think I used too small of a font. And then I define h of x as the product of f and g, correct? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I can say that h of x equals x cubed times x to the fourth. And Lexus, what is that? x to the seventh. Perfect. And so let's say this is a quiz question. This is number one. Okay. Would you be happy to see that I'm asking you to take the derivative of this? Yeah. Do you think you can get that right? What do you get? 7x to the sixth. 7x to the sixth. And that is absolutely correct. Everybody agree? Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to look at the derivative of f. And Erica, here's f. What is its derivative? 3x three three x squared. And if that was the second question on the quiz, you'd be happy, wouldn't you? Okay. And Emily, what would be the derivative of g? 4x to the third. To the third. Okay, everybody agree? So I'm going to take the product of those two. And Annika, what do you get when you multiply those? 3x squared times 4x cubed. Uh, to the fifth. Uh, Is that what you said? Yeah. 2 plus 3, 5? Yeah. Okay. You're not lying to me, are you? No, I'm not. Okay. Now, <laughs> Lexus, I said this was the answer, correct? Yes. Is this the same as this? No. No. So the derivative of h does not equal the product of the derivative of f times the derivative of g. They don't equal each other. But Samantha, notice something. You see this coefficient of 7? 3 plus 4 is 7. And look as of this exponent of 6. 2 times 3 is 6. What if I did this? Let's say I take 3x squared. That's the derivative of f. Times x to the fourth. So this is f prime. This is g. I get 3x to the sixth. Would you agree? Then over here, I'm going to take 4x cubed, which is the derivative of g, times x cubed, which is f, and I'm going to get 4x to the 6. Correct? And Lily, what happens when I add them? You get, you get 7x. All right, let's try this again. Ava, you ready? Okay. Yes. So h of x is equal to the product. So f is 6x squared 
and G is 4x cubed, correct? So what would H be? You're multiplying the two, right? Yeah. 24x to the fifth. Perfect. Now you're going to take the derivative of that. Do you know what 24 times 5 is? Do you know what 5 times 20 is? Do you know what you get when you have 20 nickels? 100. Do you know what you have when you have 4 nickels? 20. What's 100 plus 20? That's what I do when I swim. That keeps me from drowning, just doing that kind of math, okay? X to the what? Fourth. Fourth. Perfect. Okay? So, the derivative of F of X, Elizabeth, is what? Here's F, 6X squared. 12X. 12X. And the derivative of G, Elizabeth, is what? Um, 12x squared. 12x squared. So if I took and multiplied these two together, do you know what 12 times 12 is? 144. Yes. That's 12 cartons of eggs. Okay. X to what power? Third. Do you know what we call um, 144 in mathematics? A gross. That's what's known as a gross. So, does h prime of x equal f prime of x times g prime of x? Are they the same? <coughs> Absolutely not. In other words, it'd be an easy way to do it, but it's the wrong way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of f, which is 12x, times g, which is 4, 4x to the third, plus the derivative of g, which is 12x squared, times f, which is 6x squared. Sierra, what's 12 times 4? x times x cubed um, x plus do you know what 6 times 12 is 72 yeah very good x to the Four. fourth and you know when you where you get when you add 48 <coughs> and 72 um, 120. 120 x to the fourth which is the derivative of h Alicia Tell me what to write down. It tells me that f times g is equal to h. Oh, what's f? <coughs> oh, 3x plus 6. What's g? 4x plus Remember doing these a long time ago? Right? What's my first term? 12x squared. What's my middle term? <coughs> 27. Yeah, 27x. Plus what? Plus 6. 6. What's the derivative? Um, 24x. Perfect. Okay, everybody agree? All right. Noah, what's the derivative of f? Uh, 3. What's the derivative of g? 4. Should I even multiply those together? And are they going to give me this? No. No. It's crazy, right? Yeah. So, what is the derivative of f is 3. And g is parentheses 4x plus 1. Would you agree? Yeah. And the derivative of g is 4. And f is 3x plus 6. 
Would you agree? So what is 3 times 4x? Uh, 12x. Plus? 3. Plus, what do I get here? Uh, 12x. Plus what? 24. And do I get 24x plus 27? Okay, turn the page. I'm skipping the proof for now. Okay, and we're going to do these three problems, and then I'm going to stop and let you work. Okay? So, Matt, this is a function. I'm going to call it f. And this is another function. I'm going to call it h. And I'm multiplying those two to get, get G. Would you agree? So I'm going to have G. And if you notice, up here, it says take, you know, you got two different functions. Take one function. I'll take F. 2X squared plus 3X. And I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of this. So this is F. I'm going to multiply it by h prime, the derivative of h. What is the derivative of h? 4. Four. Plus, now I'm going to take the derivative of f and multiply it by h. So what's the derivative of f, Matt? 4x plus 3. 4x plus 3. And h is 4x minus 5, correct? And now I'm just going to do my algebra. And here I get 8x squared plus 12x. Does that look correct, Matt? And over here I get 16x squared. Does that look correct? This is a negative 20x. This is 12x. I believe I get a negative 8x. Is that correct? Minus 15. So my final derivative is 24x squared plus 4x minus 15. So here's f times g. The derivative of h is going to be f times the derivative of g plus um, g times the derivative of f. So Ren, I know that f is x squared. What's the derivative of cosine? Opposite sine. Negative sine. Negative sine. Very good. Very good. Plus g, which is the cosine of x, times the derivative of f. So what's the derivative of x squared, Ren? 2x. 2x. So your final answer is going to be this. A negative x squared sine of x. And what I do is I put this in front because a lot of students make the mistake of taking that 2x and multiplying it by x and then write cosine of 2x squared and get a voodoo stamp. Because you can't do that. Plus 2x cosine x. And that's all you got to do. So here I have a function g. That's 3x. Sine is h. And here I just got the 2 cosine x. So the derivative of this is going to be g times the derivative of h plus h times the derivative of g. What's the derivative of 2 cosine x? Yeah. Is it negative 2 sine x? It's exactly that. Okay. Now, Travis, this is what I'll have some students do in here. And it's not wrong, it just takes time. 
they'll say, Mr. Kruger, there are two things being multiplied here. I can take 2 times the derivative of cosine and get, a neg and get negative sine x, plus cosine x times the derivative of 2. But what's the derivative of 2? 0. zero. And guess what 0 times cosine is? Zero. 0. So it's not there at all, is it? Does everybody follow what I'm saying? So I don't do that because every time I take a derivative of a constant, I'm going to get 0 anyway, and I don't want to write it down. So I got to keep going to finish this. G is 3x. Cody, what's the derivative of sine? Cosine x. Excellent. And here I have plus uh, h is the sine of x. And what's the derivative of 3x, Cody? Three. 3. So I got 3 sine of x minus 2 sine of x. Would you agree, Cody? Yep. If I saw 3 sine x's on my table here and I took 2 away, how many would I have left? What is 3 sine x minus 2 sine x? Not sure? I didn't hear you. Sine of x. Sine of x. You probably said it 14 times and I didn't hear you. That's the product rule. Okay. Monday we we're going to review it again. I'm going to give you a little bit about the quotient rule. Okay. All right. So I just got one thing to give you.